I'm going to show you today how to create a form or survey using Google Docs. So I've logged into Elmwood's version of Google Docs here and what I can do just the same way as I would start a presentation or a typed document, I go here and I hit the big red create button and instead of creating a document or presentation, I'm going to go down and create a form. So. Um, I could create a form if I wanted to have people sign up for something or if I wanted to get their feedback about something or ask a question. One of the great things about the form is once people fill it out, it automatically creates graphs and visualizations of the information that you've collected. So right up here, um, the first thing it wants you to do is create um, a name for your form. I'm going to do um, just a quick survey about uh, how many people ride their bicycle to get to school? So, um, and maybe a few other questions related to bicycles. So, bicycle uh, transportation survey. And the one thing I love about Google Docs is it corrects your spelling as you go. So uh, here I could put a quick description um, or maybe explain to the people who are taking my survey why they're taking it. So I am collecting information about who rides bikes. Okay, there are several different types of questions. Here's an example question that's already set up. It says it's called sample question one. And as you can see in this whole yellow box, these are all the settings for my first question. So up here, um, maybe, actually before we give a, our question a title, maybe we want to decide what kind of answer we're looking for. I'm going to suggest that most of the answers you um, collect from people should be uh, either multiple choice or check boxes or um, choose from a list or a scale from one to 10 or one to five. And the reason those are really good questions to ask is because then you can easily see a visualization of the answers in a graph. Um, if you ask people questions about, you know, how often do you ride your bike and then leave a text box for them to type, I ride my bike pretty often. It's difficult to easily um, group people's answers together. Whereas if you have preset answers for them, um, it will easily visualize it. Okay, so question one, uh, how often do you ride your bike? Question mark. Um, if you need to, you can put help text here. I'm not going to. So I'm going to give some uh, people some answers here. I'm going to say I want um, a multiple choice. Option one, once per month, once Per week, more than once per week, um, let's say every day is our last option. So we've got four options there, and I'm done with this question, so I say done. Once I click done, this is exactly what the person filling out your survey will see when they see it. It'll look exactly like that, and they can check which one applies to them. So here's sample question two. Um, I'm just going to erase it and show you how to add a brand new question. So I'm going to go up here and say add item. And this time, uh, maybe instead of a multiple choice, we'll go on a scale. So a scale is where someone rates something from one number to another. So how much do you enjoy riding your bike? Um, from one to five, where one is not very much, and five is very, very much. Actually, let's not be silly, very much. And say done. One other option I forgot to show you in the first um, question here is, you can make this a required question, which means for someone to complete your survey fully, they have to answer that. I'm actually gonna go back and make this one a required question too. If you wanna edit something you've already done, you just hover your mouse over it and you'll see a little pencil appears. You go ahead and click that, it lets you edit it. And now I'm gonna make this one also a required question. And now you can see they have little red stars beside them, which means 
they have to answer it. I'm going to add one more type of question just so you see um, uh, how it works, and we're going to have people choose from a list. So this is, it's not so different from a multiple choice. Um, how often do you draw your bike to school? And let's say uh, choose from a list. So option one will be every day, once a week, and let's say well, sometimes. Another thing I should be consistent on, I'm not being consistent here, I've um, not used uppercase letters for any of my answers, so I guess I should be consistent in, in that, this question as well. Also, not use uppercase letters. I'm also going to make this re required. Okay, so I've got one, two, three questions. And oh, I see a, another little error here, so I'm going to push my pencil to edit. And Let's say every day, lowercase d, and done. Okay, so I'm ready to send this out. I can require whomever fills it out to have to sign into their Elmwood Google Docs account um, to answer my questionnaire, but if I want to send this, let's say, to someone else, maybe if you were going to interview um, your parents or something like that, you would want to make sure to uncheck that box. So. Um, actually, I would make sure that none of these boxes are checked unless you only want it to be answered by people here at Elmwood, in which case you could check this box off. Okay, I'm going to save this. And now what I want to do is email the form out. I'm going to click that. And this is where you can put the email address of every single person you want to answer it. But if you're like me, you might not know the um, email address of every single person off by heart. So what I often do is I send it to myself. And I say, I'm going to uncheck this. This will actually put all of the questions inside the email. We don't need to do that. So I'm going to send it to myself and I'll show you what that will look like. So I'm going to say send. I've typed my email address. Make sure it's sent or typed correctly or it won't send. So I say send. Now, if I go over to my email, you'll see I have an email here from Google Docs. And it says, your form bicycle, oh, let's go to this one actually. So it says, I am collecting information about who rides bikes. I've invited you to fill out the form, blah, 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 blah. So the person who receives your, um, receives this can click here, and this is exactly what they'll see. So here's the form we just made, and they can fill it out. How often do you ride your bike? More than once a week. How do you enjoy it? Very much. How often do you ride your bike to school? I'll say sometimes. And then I'll submit that. Okay, but let's say that I want a lot of other people to fill this out. I can go ahead and say forward. This is back in my email here. And then I can type the names of every person I want to fill this out. So let's say I want to miss Holmes and Miss Wigand. To fill out my survey, I just type their names. I might erase this thing here that says original message, so it looks like it's coming right from me. And then I just send it off. Uh, now I could add a little more information here. Dear Miss Wigan and Miss Holmes, I am collecting information about who rides bikes. I've invited you. Da -da -da -da. Sincerely. Mr. Burrow. And then I can say send. But I won't, because I don't actually want them to fill it out. Let's take a quick look, now that I've sent that, at what it's going to look like from Google Docs when you're ready to see your survey information. So if I go back and I've logged into Google Docs, you can see right here it says Bicycle Transportation Survey. If I click that, what it brings up is a spreadsheet which has all the data that you filled in. You can see it's been filled in here by me. I just filled it out, remember? Um, but this isn't an awesome way to look at data. We want to see a, a visualization with graphs. And so what I can do is once I'm looking at it here, I can go to Form, and I can say Show Summary of Responses. 
And what this does is it shows me a visual representation of all my questions and who's answered them. So how often do you ride your bike? Once per week, once per month, once. So you can see we've got a pie chart here. We can see we have 100% of our respondents uh, ride their bikes more than once per week. But I'm the only person who's filled it out so far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video here. I'm gonna fill out this a whole bunch of other times just so you can see what it will look like when you get more data in there. So you can see 100% of our respondents like riding their bike very much. And again, 100% of our respondents sometimes ride their bike to school. Okay, so I've had the survey filled out a few times. So I'm back here in Google Docs. I wanna check out my results. I go ahead and click here. And again, we see things in a spreadsheet. It shows me the time and date that the person filled it out and their answers. Again, this is great, but it would be much easier uh, to look at um, a visual representation of all our data. So we go to um, form and show summary of responses. And let's scroll down. So let's see, let's understand what this visual information is telling us. I can see these two pieces of the pie here are the biggest and they are telling me that um, uh, two people ride their bike once per month and two people ride their bike once per week. Here we can see that some people, very few, only one person here rides their bike every day and again only one person rides their bike every week. I can see this is a percentage over here so I can see 33 percent of the people who responded ride their bike more than once per week but that was only again two people who responded. Here we've got a nice bar graph showing us how much people enjoy riding their bike. Remember this is where I asked people to rate it from one to five where five was they liked it very much and one was not very much. Well we can see that we've got a couple of people who are really love riding their bike and one person who really doesn't like riding their bike and a few people are in the middle. Okay, we've got two people who rated it a three and two people are rated it a four. So again, if I look over here, I see the percentages of people who don't really like riding their bike, only 17% of the people and only 17% of our people really love it. And then we've got 33% said rated at a three and 33% rated at a four. So most of the people are in the middle or above the middle. And again, we've got a pie chart here. We can see the biggest piece of the pie is that how often do you ride your bike to school? Sometimes. So most people ride their bikes sometimes to school. And we can see that that's 50% of our respondents. And I can see that half of the pie is colored that light pink color, which represents the sometimes. Um, this last graph here just shows you um, the number of people who have responded since the graph was um, sent out. And so I can see um, just today that six people have responded and yesterday zero people responded because there was no graph. So tomorrow you'll see um, if we looked at this again it would wiggle up and down it would be a line chart showing us how many people responded each day. Okay so that is how you make a Google Docs form. And I'm just going to close this for one second to show you. Let's say there was just an error in my form and I wanted to correct it. Uh, again, from Google Docs, I go and I click on my survey. It brings up the spreadsheet first. I go to Form and I choose Edit Form. This takes me back to here where I could add another question or correct my spelling if I'd spelled something wrong in this question up here. Or I could change my responses. So I could go down and click edit the response and change something about my questions or add another option.